Hello. First L60. For those who haven't watched my last video. There are two breakers on the 330 kV line. Short circuit of phase A to ground. In a single phase rec losing cycle, a three phase trip occurred by mistake. L60 does not write the sum of the currents of two breakers. Therefore, in the last video I needed to calculate the sum of currents to analyze distance protection. I'll add a file from the next protection. REL 670. The devices are not synchronized with each other, so I will do it manually. The black cursor is responsible for the bottom file, I place it at the beginning of the short circuit. The red cursor is responsible for the top file. I put it in a similar place in the first file. Next, I select the command, align additional file with cursor. I'll check how accurately I synchronize the files. The difference is 1 millisecond. I will repeat the synchronization. I'm uploading the third file. Please note that the first two have been merged into one file and I can no longer move them relative to each other. Lots of analog channels and the browser slowed down. If you pay attention, in 7SA522 the currents are reversed, this is because the windings of the current transformers to which the device is connected are assembled differently. In the protection, the grounding point is switched so as to show the direction correctly. There is less difference here. Let's check how accurately the files are synchronized now. Look at the black cursor. At the top is L60, then REL670, at the bottom is 7SA522. I will turn off all unnecessary channels. The REL670 records the sum of the breaker's currents, so for the analysis I will use the channels from this device. I will check the angle of the faulted phase and the zero sequence current in order to understand how to set up impedance calculators. The vectors are co-directional, 
our calculators are designed just for this case. Let's move on to digital channels. I'll place the red cursor at the beginning of the fault. Here is the operation of the first step of distance protection in the L60. As you can see, the L60 took 19 milliseconds to trip. Here is the operation of the first step of distance protection in the REL 670. As you can see, the REL 670 is a little bit faster. And here is 7SA522. The device took only 8 milliseconds to work. This is less than half a cycle at 50 Hz. So Siemens is first, Hitachi is second, General Electric is third. We can end here, but I want to show the differences in the characteristics and calculation of impedance. I'll leave only analog channels from the REL 670 so that the browser slows down less. I am adding the first zone for all types of devices. I'm inserting the settings. To begin with, I'll select the phase phase loop to see what the characteristics look like. L60 and 7SA522 are absolutely the same. Now I switch to the ground phase loop. Serious differences are already visible here, primarily due to the fact that the REL 670 has increased characteristics. I am adding calculators for each device. I enter compensation coefficients for the zero sequence current. Below them is an inversion button for the case if the zero sequence current is different in phase with the current in the faulted phase. For more details, see the video about Cyprotec devices. Now you need to link the channels in the ComTrade file with calculators. I'll speed up the video, a rather boring process. I will change the colors of the impedances so that it is clear what protection they belong to. Here you can already see how zero sequence current compensation affects the measured impedance. It can be seen that after compensation, the impedance vector is smaller for the 7SA522 and its active component is slightly larger. That's all. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Peace for everyone.